Welcome to the first Trina Patterson show of the year. We have a brand new year and a brand new coach. Coach Patterson, you've already had two games so far. How does the chemistry look to you? We are really just testing our players to see um, what attributes they're bringing on um, game day. Um, it's a lot different from practice. It's game day, and so when the lights are on, um, what are our players doing? And so we've seen some very good things so far and looking forward to more good things. And coach, the first home game, you guys had a pretty impressive showing of fans there. What does that support mean to you? Megan, we had a great fan base. Like the energy in the crowd got us going. Um, we looked out there and we saw a lot of uh, Spartan fans cheering for us. It, it made us feel, it made our players feel great. And I feel great as a coach. I think, I want to thank all of our fans. I want to thank our supporters. And we hope to see our we hope to see that for every home game. It was exciting. It meant a lot to us. The band was awesome. The dancers were awesome. The cheerleaders were awesome. It was a great atmosphere. And you've mentioned to me before about improvement, that that is going to be the name of the game this year. You're really focused on getting better every time. And even the game against Asheville, you mentioned the differences last year and this year. What are those? Asheville was a giant. They're a giant because they won their conference. They won 26 games. So we had to figure out methods of how to kill the giant. That was kind of our theme for that day. And we need many arrows. We need many arrows to kill a giant. And so with our team, we had to have multiple people to do what they do best. But we, we actually were very competitive in three quarters. So Tennessee Tech on Thursday, are those lessons going to be really relevant with Tennessee Tech, or are they a different team entirely? Um, they have three small guards that like to penetrate. I think we're going to see that a lot. Um, I, I like our size, though. I think that uh, we can talk about uh, the other teams penetrating, but they have to guard our size. We have a six-foot guard in Nadine. Um, Alexis Willie comes off the bench, and she's a six-foot guard. I think our point guard, Alexis Pitchford, is a freshman, but she doesn't play like a freshman. She's very, very, um, very strong. She's uh, physical, she can penetrate, she gets really emotional. And so that is one of the most difficult positions to play as a freshman, a point guard. But she's very mature and I like what she's doing and she's going to be great for us at that point guard position. And Coach, finally, I have to ask about the transformation of you taking over this team. So I think there's a lot of interest out there as to what that process has been like over the last few months, um, coming with a new team and kind of trying to figure out your way into this system and trying to figure out the girls. How is that process going? We have to change the mentality of the team. Okay. It's not going to be overnight, mm -hmm. but we're taking baby steps and I thought we took a really big step in, in playing well against Asheville. Um, we have to now switch gears and think about the road okay. because we've been in the comfort of our home. We want to win at home and sneak some on the road. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the key. We got to win at home and sneak some wins on the road. That's how we're attempting to move forward in the right direction, and I know we'll get there. Mm -hmm. Coach, best of luck on the road. I'm excited to watch you guys on the road, and then when you come back here in Fleming, see those games as well. That's Trina Patterson, everyone. Thanks again for joining me on the show. When we get back, we'll have an update for fall sports, and we'll see a little bit more basketball with senior India Timpton. Add big flavor to your next get-together with Subway Catering. Featuring good-to-go boxed meals with a side and freshly baked cookie, crowd-pleasing giant subs, and piled-high sandwich platters overflowing with flavorific choices. All made the way you say with everything you love, like jalapenos and chipotle southwest sauce. Subway Catering is simple and satisfying, a great value for any budget. Just call 877-360-CATER or visit Subway.com and let us take care of any occasion. Subway, cater fresh. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. To sell your home on time for the most money, you need a sharp agent with a marketing strategy that creates the most demand. Bottom line, you need a partner willing to put their own money on the line for you. In Greensboro and Winston-Salem, it would be Jason Bramblett. He attracts hundreds of buyers and creates so much demand that Jason can guarantee if your home doesn't sell at a price and deadline you agree to, he will buy it. Partner with the agent I trust. Go online or call and get your home sold. Thanks for sticking around on the Trina Patterson Show. 
We still have one more sport to cover though. Volleyball is still playing. Overall in the Southern Conference, they finished 11 and five. This earned them the number two seed in the Southern Conference tournament. This will be held by Samford in Birmingham, Alabama. The Spartans will take on a number seven seeded Western Carolina. So far this season, UNCG beat them both times. We had to keep you updated on volleyball's progress, but after all, this is the Trina Patterson Show, and that means women's basketball. You've heard a decent amount about the team already, but we have a little bit more for you by the means of India Timpson. Last summer, I had the opportunity to go to the NCAA Career and Sports Forum in Indianapolis, Indiana, and one of the women that I met there was the creator of this program called Coach for College. I was one of, I think, 20 in my group that went to Vietnam for 27 days, which is pretty much a month. And we lived in a rural area in the South, and we taught kids different classes and also taught them sports. So I taught an English class and a basketball class to 8th and ninth graders for those three weeks that I was there. India is really special in the fact that she doesn't take anything for granted. She's very appreciative. What she understands is in the United States, our our kids, uh, we play the YMCA, we have AAU, and that young girls across the world don't always have those opportunities. I think that what it would do is it make her more appreciative of her opportunity to play and then maybe make sure she gives back. I know the first day, the most shocking thing to me, you know, I th feel like one of the main differences between Vietnamese kids and American kids is we feel that, you know, school is something we have to do, whereas over there it's a privilege. Um, a lot of the kids there, especially in the area we were in, are required to drop out of school just to help their families work in whatever field that they're in. So going to school and getting to go past middle school and even high school is a big thing there. So on the first day when class ended, the kids picked up a broom and started sweeping the room and organizing the desk and pushing everything in and they don't leave until the whole room is clean and they leave their shoes outside as a sign of respect and they walk around barefoot in the classroom to keep it that much cleaner and even if we would forget to erase the board they would make sure that it was erased so that was one thing that really stood out to me was just the difference of how they value education and seeing it as a privilege and not something that's required and a burden to do. Just the resources and the tools we have um, so for instance the basketball they're playing outside on a cement slab with just the two goals and they have no shoes on. Um, they're playing basketball, running up and down. Basketball, soccer, and baseball were the three sports that we taught at our school. And they're playing all of those barefoot because most of them only have flip-flops in general. So they're, you know, one of the kids cut his foot open playing one day and just was ready to play again. Whereas, you know, here we have ankle braces, tennis shoes, you know, socks. That's another thing that a lot of the kids don't even have clothes to shoes or socks. This isn't something that in every student athlete or every basketball player has the opportunity to do. It's, it's the ones that are very um, unique, have a unique background, have given back to the university. India has given back to the university her time, her, um, her athletic uh, ability, her leadership. Her, she's taking care of her academics. And so because of that, she's been afforded that opportunity. She's just really, really embraced the total package. I, I applaud her. I think she's a well-rounded student athlete. She's like 360 degrees. She has the whole package. She's an athlete, she's a student, and then she, she takes care of the community, and the community takes care of her. And I think that's where we have here. For the kids, most of them had never played sports before, and when we left, may never have the opportunity to really play in that sort of a structure again. So just valuing it every day and knowing that you know, you're not just playing for you, but those around you.